focus tonight is going to be uh, swing trades. Man, uh, day trade wise, MBOT, just a beautiful Oracle signal this morning. Um, right at 9.45, by the way. Great job, Oracle. And then at noon, um, I went, went over it again. And uh, basically, standard VWAP hold high at daybreak. And we talked about that 250 area. Uh, you know, again, I don't know which one was better. Um, the, the nice thing was maybe the Oracle signal maybe was the, was the best one because you basically had about 25 minutes to be ready. Um, and then it broke that high day, buck 90, obviously went to 440. I doubt anybody stayed in that long. But the point is that 945 move from two bucks to 250, very, very predictable. And then it puts in that top, top, right at that Oracle resistance levels. These levels come into play over and over and over again. And then live on that webinar, broke out at 250, uh, had a goal of three plus, it immediately went to three plus. So you, again, predictable move. Um, if you were aggressive and stayed in it, consolidated and then ripped the 440. But I, I think the, the predictable move was that uh, 250 break, whole dollar, half dollar, everything we talked about already. Just nice to see. And then Pack W was the uh, uh, other, was the morning idea um, at 650 and closed just a few cents off the high. Uh, high was 715, closed at uh, 695 basically, and closed at, you know, at or around the high of the day. That's what we look for, uh, for to, to hold something. Now, I think it's very dangerous to hold these banks. They're a lot like biotechs, like you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. But if you had a nice buffer, you know, you know our, when, when it comes to you know, holding stocks overnight, we always have the same uh, you know, you know, kind of the same thought process. And that thought process is winners hold winners, losers hold losers. So um, something like a get packed W again, we talked about this morning, dangerous to hold overnight, but geez, if you're up 50, 60, 70 cents a share, um, odds are you're protected from, uh, from anything too bad happening, okay? Um, but uh but yeah, those are the two number one ideas today. Uh, Pack W and um, and Mbot, and, you know, and many many different ways to trade those. Okay, so let's get into swing trades. Um, that that's the goal tonight. Uh, HEPA. Speaking of swing trades, this just shows you the power of these higher priced biotechs right now. And uh, let me go new note and swing trade strategy session uh, and it is the 22nd um, HEPA uh, was this an earnings winner what was the catalyst or, or was it no just um, phase two news yep but again what I was getting at reminds me so much of IMGN and NNOX I mean all three of those, they're, they're kind of all in the similar price range. And IMGN, I mean, we've been talking about that one for a month now, and NOX as well. And then HEPA has now joined the bunch. So um, HEPA is the new IMGN and uh, NNOX. And really all three of those, all three of those continue to grind to new highs so all three of them are, are red to greens tomorrow. You know, you'll listen. I think, you know, you know, we're working through the process right now. I think I'm gonna, we're, we're gonna end up with an artificial intelligence play. Um, I think that there, there's a better story there, but you know, something we often discuss is especially as hot as the market's been this year, it's not like, it's not like there's only one swing trade. It's not like there's only one sector. Now you might ask, well, why focus on one? Well, there's two reasons, you know, what, what, what we're doing here and, you know, those of you that have been around, you've heard this a million times, okay? There's two goals here. Number one is to find the, the best swing trade, the best, that, that's the goal, but so that we can trade it. Now, but, but a very uh, close second is uh, 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 learning the process. You know, you know, that, that's like, like, that's why I love these sessions 
And I'll tell everyone even, you know, to watch the older ones, you know. Um, Because to me, a strategy session from a year ago is is equally applicable. Now, the ticker is going to be different, but the process is going to be the same. The process we go through remains the same. So... Um, so take advantage, take advantage of the archive. I mean, um, we, I missed a few weeks, you know, it's been a little bit over the last couple of weeks because my daughter seems like we had something every Monday night, but it, ultimately the, uh, uh, the process is always the same. So yes, trader, basically what we talk about when we're looking for a red to green trader TG, like let's say HEPA. Okay. Let's use HEPA as an example. The close on HEPA was about 1980. So what, what you would look for is that gap down, okay? Um, that gap down move and then a reclaim of that 19 area. And then normally we're looking to risk the morning lows or VWAP. Now, a lot of the times we have to kind of determine our, uh, our, our stop based on pre-market action, you know, because obviously the standard week open ready green is, you know, that big gap down and then risking off of VWAP. But at the same time, that's that's the beauty of doing a webinar every day because uh, we go over it every day. So, all right. Um, so well, the first thing we do, you know, and we, we always start here is we run this simple breakout scan. Okay, the, the, the swing slash gapper scan. It is a simple scan, but listen, I, I think that so many people, especially when it comes to scans, they overcomplicate things. Like, like we're not trying to, and this is one thing that I think trips up a lot of new traders. We're, we're not trying to find some stock that no one knows about, you know? And, and, and pay attention to this next point because it's very pop, very important. What, you know, what makes stocks go up day after day, week after week, you know, month after month. Most of our most of our swings are a few weeks at the longest, but we've had multi-monthers before. What makes a stock continue to go up day after day, week after week, month after month? Well, there's got to be a reason. There's there's got to be there's got to be new buyers. Cuz I mean, think about it. If if a stock breaks out today, or or let's say you're running some esoteric scan, okay? And you find some stock that no one knows about. Well, who's buying today? Who's buying tomorrow? Who's buying next week? Okay, and that is a that's really one of the core principles of how we pick that best stock is because we want we want what I call obvious ideas. Okay, we want stocks that everyone knows about because that's how you get new buyers each day. Each, you know, or, or again for days, weeks, months, etc. No new buyers means no movement. The stock either goes sideways or it goes back down. We don't want that. We want stocks that go. I mean, our goal with these swings is to make, you know, this is another one of our rules. We're trying to make day trade like gains in safer stocks over a matter of days and weeks. Okay. We want to make 20, 30, 40, 50%, but we want to focus on higher quality stocks that we don't necessarily have to watch every second of the day because, you know, we're day trading. Like, or, or you're part-time. Like, like, swing trading, especially if you're really busy, and especially if you have a job like, I don't know, tr truck driver. There we go, okay? Like, listen, I, uh, I want everyone to succeed at trading, but if you're, you know, but if you're driving a, a, a truck or you're flying a plane... A pilot, pilot's a good example. Listen, I don't want you. I don't want you day trading if I'm on the flight. Okay, <laughs> the last thing I want my pilot doing is day trading. Okay, so, but so so if you've got a job like that that demands your attention, a lot of us are. You know, obviously I'm spoiled because I do this full time, but a lot of you might be spoiled that you have you know work from home white collar jobs and you know you can day trade pretty easy with that. But swing trading is, is applicable to those types of jobs where, where you, there's times you are simply unavailable. And then what I like to do and what I coach is, is a hybrid approach. You know, I like, to have, I like to have my swings squirreled away, as I say, 
you know, less volatile stocks that I don't have to stare every second at. And then at the same time, trade the big movers of the day, like an MBOT, et cetera. So back to that scan, we're just looking for simple breakouts. Stocks trading high volume, stocks that are higher priced, and then stocks that are, you know, this is that secret sauce, this last code block right here. Stocks that are within the 52-week high by 2% or less. Basically, what we want is stocks that kiss the, the 52-week high and then pulled back but held within that range. So they're hugging, you'll, you'll hear me say VWAP hugging a lot. These stocks are hugging the 52. So simple scan, doesn't need to be complicated, simple's good. We're gonna run that stock scan, and then we're gonna sort by volume, and then we're gonna look for stocks that we know. You know, it, like, like, now, if you're brand new, okay, um, this may be, I don't know, I don't know if it's difficult, but, you know, there's a certain amount of, of experience that you have to have. Like, like, listen, I think I'm one of the best out there at getting new traders up to speed quickly, but it's a process. I mean, I mean, like, like again, I hopefully this doesn't sound cocky. I think I'm really good at mentoring people, but I can't teach you everything in a day. I can't teach you everything in a week. I can't teach you everything in a month, okay? But with a matter of months or, you know, six months, you're going to start building that mental database and you're going to know these stocks that people fall in love with. And that's what we look for. Um, now, listen, if you've been around the trading community for a, a while, you've probably already got that mental database. Now, look at what we got right at the top. Apple, NVIDIA, and Microsoft. Who remembers, you know, I've, I've been talking about the four horsemen of, the, of, the, of artificial intelligence. Look at the top three stocks. The only one missing is Google. What did Google do today? I think Google's just, I mean, I don't think Google had a bad day. I just don't think it's up 2%. It's just, it's not within the range. It, it pulled back from, it, yeah, basically, it pulled back from the 52. That's the only reason it's not on there. So here we go. Um, we've got the top, we've got three of the four, four horsemen of artificial intelligence, okay? Uh, Mama says, I talk too fast. Mama, uh, listen, I just figure... People want me to pack as much information as possible. Um, sorry. <laughs> but I, you know, I, I know I do talk fast, but what I'm trying to do is, is pack as much information in the time as we have together. So um, NVIDIA, MSFT, Apple. And, and also what we're doing is we're looking for stocks that have ran in the past. And we look in, we're looking for what we call story stocks and we're looking for theme stocks, okay? Because we want to locate that hottest hot sector. Apple, NVIDIA, Microsoft, all AI plays. Oracle, arguably an AI play. Uh, CRM, AI play, okay? CRM is on the scan. Salesforce, uh, Salesforce is implementing artificial intelligence in, into their products. So now we're spotting a theme, okay? ARRI, that's a higher price biotech, by the way, right? Or no, semiconductors. I always, yeah, this one, there's a similar ticker that I always mix up thinking it's a biotech, but um, geez, another nice breakout. They, I mixed solar, okay. I mixed, uh, sorry, I mixed the tickers up. I think it's ARRA is the biotech I'm thinking of. Green energy. Um, Always a hot theme, but I don't think as hot as AI, okay? Um, artificial intelligence. And when, when I say that for the sake of tonight, again, I will try and, and, and frame it. But remember, there's AI the stock and there's AI the sector, okay? So now next question is, why not swing Apple, NVIDIA, Microsoft, etc.? Um, you can, it's just, they move so slow. I mean, a big, a big day for Microsoft, a big day for NVIDIA is a couple percent. Now, if that fits your, your, your trading style, buy Apple, buy NVIDIA, buy Microsoft. But 
again, back to our process, remember what we're trying to do. And I know this is kind of looping back to the beginning. We're trying to find that sweet spot, okay? That sweet spot of volatility and safety, okay? Like, like it's like a, a Venn diagram, okay? Like, like, actually, I can't believe like hundreds and hundreds of, of swing trade webinars, and I don't think I've ever drawn this. I can't believe this. Ah, nice circles. <laughs> Safety. I will get my stylus fixed. I'm writing with the mouse, okay? <laughs> I, I don't, I think I have to get a new monitor is the, bu is the bummer. So again, I'm writing with the mouse. Not that my handwriting is that much better with the, uh, with, with the stylus, but it, at least you can kind of read it, but I'll get it fixed. I think I need, this monitor is like $4,000 and the touchscreen portion broke. But anyway, what we're trying to do is, is, is this, that we're trying to find that sweet spot of safety and volatility so that, like I mentioned earlier, we can, we can squeak out day trade-like gains in a swing trade type time frame and not have to stare at the stock every single day. So that's why we're not gonna, it's not gonna be Microsoft. It's not gonna be Apple. It's not gonna be Nvidia, even though I love all of those. What we're gonna do is now that we've determined the hottest sector, in my opinion, okay, the sweet spot right now is AI. Again, all these biotechs, okay, they're in your list. You'll have the show notes after the webinar. I, again, if, if like, if, if you send me a message and you're like, hey, Tim, I think HEPA is better, I'm gonna be like, okay, you, just, you, you took a, a phase two biotech that closed at 52 week highs, closed at the high day, traded unusual volume, did a, did a beautiful uh, morning dip and rip, closed, you know, it, it's one of those situations where, I'm not going to be like, oh, what are you talking about? You're crazy. I'll be like, hey, and, and the same for IMG and NLX. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at our sector lists for, um, for our favorite. So let's go to drive. And then remember, these are, you do have these on your dashboard in the list of lists. But I'm going to jump over to AI. And then we're going to look at the tickers with the most volume. Okay, we want to sort for volume, highest volume, and then again, we're going to look for those sweet spot trades. Okay, so here we get, and this, for those of you that have been around, you probably know that um, it's probably no surprise. I'm sure none of you are shocked by the stock we're about to settle on. Okay, but if we look at the top of the list, we filter down and we've got, um, you know, we got Tesla. Okay, let me delete this top row. Just to clean this up, delete row. Okay, Tesla, okay, huge. AMD, huge. FFIE, true penny stock. So it's like you go from Tesla, you know, one of the biggest, you know, you, it's funny, you got like Tesla, Apple, NVIDIA, and then you get FFIE, FFIE in there, okay? 20 cent stock would never recommend swing trading a 20 cent stock. And then we come down, we got IDEX again, another very low price stock. Um, Google, Intel, bing. Again, probably many of you knew this. We talked about that 2050 re reclaim as uh, the squeeze point from the Spruce Point Capital uh, short seller piece. So now we have, we have a real company that's in the hot sector, that we have multiple technical levels we can risk off of, and we know it's loaded with short sellers because of the fact that Spruce Point Capital put out that uh, uh, short seller hit piece and everyone's upside down. So right now, with AI back at 28 bucks, everyone, whoops, is is upside down. That, that, that blindly followed that, that hit piece. So, we're gonna start and let's break this down.
And again, remember, I know it's going to be, it, it's frequently hard to read my writing, especially with the mouse, but I will talk you through everything, okay? I do talk you through everything that we, every box that we check and the rationale is why. So we're going to go over to AI. Is it a low float stock? Yeah, low-ish. It is under 100 million, but it trades the float every few days. So the great thing about AI is even though it's not uh, traditionally low-ish float, 80 million is a little higher. It does trade the float every couple of days, which is encouraging. Now, this is what we do on the worksheet though, is I'm going to mark that neutral, okay? Um, I guess I should maybe update the sheet and have a neutral, but I do consider the float neutral on AI. I wish it was more like 20 million, 30 million, but at the end of the day, yo, know, this is something we talk about. I mean, when you look at the other stocks that we're talking about with AI, okay, uh, uh, Apple, billions of shares in the float, Microsoft, billions of shares in the float, NVIDIA, I think billions. I'm going to guess billions. If not billions, a billion. 2.5 billion. Okay. I, okay. But still, you see my point. Like, and, and when, we, when we compare it to the others, you know, um, it is low flow. Like, like, what's crazy is you talk to, if you talk to some guy at like Goldman Sachs, and you tell him, you know, 80 million float, he would consider that low float. I mean, I mean, people that trade these big name stocks would be like 80 million, oh, that's a micro float. Now for us, it is higher float, but it is encouraging that it rotates through the float every few days. Um, is it up more than 10%? It was up 20% today. So we know that, um, that there's a high likelihood that this stock could continue to spike um, and, and, and continue to spike many times because of the uh, low-ish float and a big gainer. So next is, whoops, oh dang it, I keep, I cut and pasted the wrong, whoops, hold on. I closed that. The snipping tool, I like, but the problem, what I don't like about the snipping tool, I love it on Windows, but it doesn't ask you to save. So if you accidentally close, it, uh, it, it, just, it just closes. It doesn't even let you save and reopen. So anyway, um, AI, uh, again, not the exact float we want to look for, but um, low-ish float, and it goes through the float every few days. We always want to look for stocks with recent earnings. Um, when was it? I want to get the exact date. Um, da, 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 too much news, yeah. So 5.15, yep. So a week ago. Yep, so that's recent. So earnings, yes, 515, only a week ago. I mean, and really only, you know, only five trading days ago. Is there a catalyst? There are many. The thing with AI is we have earnings. Uh, we have that short seller hit piece. We have the hottest hot sector. Well, maybe, again, biotech's maybe hot, hotter, hottest hot sector. And didn't they, have a rec didn't they have another recent press release? I'm trying to think. Didn't they come out with something pumpy or not? Or no, 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 they're fighting back. Um, yeah, they're like investigating short sellers or something, which is very dubious, but, eh, you know, they're at least putting out the news, okay? So, but you know, ultimately you got earnings and you got a hot sector and you got a heavily shorted stock. So those three add up to a good catalyst. Is it at or around the 52 week high? It's very close. I mean, sure it's five bucks away. I mean, the 52 week break was uh, 34. I mean, but we're talking, you know, this thing is up in three days, it's up eight bucks a share just in three days. And once it breaks that 29 level, I think it can immediately run back to that 52. So that, that basically 29 level would be the triple top uh, from back in February, again in March. It blew through it in April, but then pulled back and then retested it again today. So um, it's not that far away. 
Um, and then is there clear support to risk off of? Yes, let's go back to that chart. Basically, right here at that failed double top area at 2750, I think would be good risk. Basically, that's that area that it blew through on the wicks and then couldn't break. So we have a clear area of 2750. Let me annotate that. Um, Float is 80 mil. Rating the catalyst, I'm gonna give this like a seven. Man, if they drop a press release. So if, if, if AI drops a press release in the next few days, that catalyst goes to a 10 um, right away. So anyway, we got a good area to risk off of the 2750. Is it a good company? I mean, they've been in business forever. You know, remember good is in air quotes, but I mean, this company has been around for I mean, forever. I mean, a day. Let me go to a 20 year chart. Um, five years, you know? I mean, it's, and, and it was around before that. It's just publicly traded for the last five years. Oh my gosh, look at that big break. Man, woo, this could retest 2021 levels if it breaks out. Man, I love that chart. Just held and held and held. So, um, and then let's look, take a quick peek at the financials. Um, 252 million in revs, and they're making money. They're in the they're they're in the green. Okay, remember when we go back to finding that sweet spot of risk to safety? We're just looking for stocks that make money. You know, uh, again, the stocks that make Apple money. You know, you find a stock that makes you know a trillion dollars a day like Apple. Well, it moves slow. Okay, you need speculative stocks, but. We just look for profitability. So 900, they made money. Better than losing money, okay? Um, so yes, it's a good hot sector. Is there a whole dollar, half dollar break? Yes, at 29.50. That's our entry, 29.50, risk on 27.50. We're, we've got $2 in, you're gonna notice that these levels line up, obviously. So if we've got two dollars of risk, what's our goal? Six dollars of upside. Oh, guess what? You know, basically new 52-week high. So 3550 plus would be our goal. And man, if it hits that, probably off to the races. So beautiful. Um, because of the short seller hit piece. So all we need. Now I think that this plan is in play. Whether or not there is a press release, but man, um, just you know, like just pray for a gap down tomorrow or Wednesday. I mean, remember these plays are typically in play all week. Okay, we do the strategy session on Monday night because I have time on Monday nights. But that that's the last point I do want to make. Remember, the reason I want you to repeat or watch these process and and like listen, maybe you're watching this webinar a month from now. And, and maybe the AI sector has died down. We're, it's the same process. Like it's, it's different tickers, it's different sectors, but it's the same process. And when you get a stock that checks every single box like this, this is in play until it, you know, until it really gives back the move, okay? Now if AI collapses tomorrow and never bounces for weeks, well then the trade plan is off the table, okay? But, um, that being said, the recipe is there. I love the three to one risk to reward too. Because I, I love that we can use that 2950 double top. We can use a 52 week high as a goal and then that 2750. So, Trader Todd, typically I recommend not entering swing trades in after hours. And there's a reason. A, like, like the more you're around Trader Todd, a significant majority of the previous day's big runners, they gap down the next day. That's why we look for those red to green patterns, okay? Um, most of them do, okay, especially when you got, remember, AI was up 20% today. So AI was up, uh, or 10%, sorry. AI was up 10%, still big gain for, a, for a, you know, a, a bigger company. So typically what's gonna happen after a big day is you're gonna get profit taking the next day. So the smart entry is to wait for that profit taking to, to, to base 
and then re-enter on the reclaim of our level. So you buy tonight, like let's say you buy AI tonight, now you gotta ride out that gap down tomorrow that happens to the majority of these big gainers that close around the high. Again, that's why we love weak open red to greens. That makes sense? I don't want you to have to ride that out. You probably get stopped. Yeah, you probably take the stop and now, and then later that day, AI goes green and retests the level and now you're like, oh man, you know, and now you're maybe timid to re-enter, maybe you're frustrated, maybe you miss it. So that's our approach with 99% of swing trades because these are the big gainers that are real stocks that they tend to have profit taking in the morning. So, all right, my friends, there we go. Short and sweet. Um, listen, HEPA, uh, HEPA is... Like if, artif if artificial intelligence wasn't so hot, it would probably be HEPA would, would be the stock. Um, just a beautiful all day grind today, good news, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera.